Hi man, Joe Armstrong and welcome to the back office teardown lab. I am a sucker for suckers and if you don't own one of these and you do electronics then you better own one of these because these are invaluable when it comes to desoldering through hole components such as these and I'm going to show you briefly why. Um, when you want to desolder a component you tend to just get a bit of solder or a bit of flux ideally and heat the joint and you can see here this thing for example is a transformer it's got loads of legs so there's no way you can apply enough heat onto all of the legs and keep them molten enough that you can pop that out so what you tend to do is work your way through them one at a time and I'm just going to hold that there so you can see that it's nice and liquid and you push the uh, plunger down on the solder sucker activated by that button and then you place it over the pin and shoop, you can see there if we zoom in a tiny bit more how it sucked all that solder away and it's not ideal to be honest with you there's always little teeny teeny bits there grabbing that will tend to try to snag it but it gives you a fighting chance of getting it off so you can see we're whizzing through and actually this is not a bad uh, solder sucker it's a cheap one from a cheap kit but it does have a couple of issues and I'll show you those those issues now so the first issue I have with it it's got quite a large gob if you see there that hole in the end is particularly big and that means it it's it has to share all of that vacuum pressure across that cross-section area so when you're applying it to certain things it doesn't have enough suck on it uh, conversely if you look at this one that has a far narrower tip and in many situations is also useful but both of these do have their problems in that they are susceptible to the tips melting off and then you've got to go and replace them in fact I was never really aware that there's such a massive difference in these it's almost as if you could push one inside the other and you can <laughs> docking right so uh, Derek uh, aka Flame Lee felt very sorry for me and he got me one of these um, I have been talking about these for years. If you're on my Discord channel, you'll know that I'm always uh, umming and ahhing about them and putting them into my shopping basket and then uh, deciding, no, maybe I can't uh, afford it this month. Um, and just to show you, by the way, just before we go into that, uh, inside of these things, there's a big old spring and a plunger. And that's how they all work. See in there? There's a big spring, a plunger, and then lots of solder dust. That may become important later because once we open up, the new one, we'll want to see how that's working. Right, so the packaging is brilliant. Look at that, it's absolutely fantastic and very detailed. Oh, there we go, it's got a silicone nozzle. That means that the nozzle shouldn't disappear and melt away. And it has some spare tubes you could order, but it also looks like it's got spare tubes in the packet, which is pretty cool. And you've probably cut that down. And there's a whole manual here. Look, it says press the end, push the button. Yeah, I don't, don't think really we need the manual. We're just going to open it. I, I, I really wanted to look at the packet and go through it and explore how, you know, Japanese it was, but it's fine. You get it, you get it. So it does feel really lovely and solid. Ooh, look at that. Yes, it's... Hmm, I'd say it's about the same weight. I'm just gonna just tapping that off my teeth to check that is metal. It seems to be an all metal construct. Oh, now that is the game changer. My gosh, that is requiring. I don't know if you can see that. You see the redness here in my hand. That is like one of those exercises for exercising your cans, your thumb, like one of those grip master. Whew. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna compare it, I almost feel like my left thumb is straining. So it's like a challenge just to see how long you can hold it there. But yeah, you can see the left thumb's twitching. It is difficult. That is going to be great for providing lots of suction. So you can remove the nozzle and put a longer one in. I do like this idea that you can remotely nozzle. But normally you've got the soldering iron pretty close, so you don't want to hang around. Before we go any further, let's pop it open. Ooh, and again, all metal, nice O-ring, very serviceable. That's the most serviceable uh, solder sucker I've seen, to be honest with you. And a big old spring, nice and clean, greased, never used before. And in there is the plunger. And that's 
Again, metal on metal in the barrel and a healthy wadge of grease. I could see it pushing the grease up as I did that. So it might be a good idea to keep these uh, lubricated. Uh, you certainly don't have any plastic parts on it, at least not obvious ones. Uh, so there's no reason for it to wear itself out. That does feel like it's gonna last an absolute lifetime. That does indeed feel like it's gonna last an absolute lifetime. So let's check it out, shall we? Again, the proof is in the pudding. The proof of the, the proof is in the pudding. There's some sort of crazy proof pudding. Right, let's go. Oh, turn the old, let's turn the boost on the iron. It's a thick old joint, there you go. So you can see the joint is nicely lubed up. And I'm gonna hit it at an angle this time. Oh! That's so clean, and it just it does push out the solder in the same way as they usually do. That was nice and clean, especially as it was at an angle. Oh, game changer. Derek, this is crazy beans. That is doing a great job. I'm just purposefully not cleaning it explicitly each go. So when you are doing a lot of soldering, or desoldering in this case, you sometimes don't want to pay too much attention to what the left hand's doing and ensuring that that nozzle is clean, but this is absolutely fine. In fact, I'm just thinking, what did it say the nozzle maximum temperature was? Because we're running the iron now at 380. I boosted it up to 380. That was a good good sesh there. Um, I'm going to see if that transformer might fall out, actually. But before we do, it did have a temperature rating here on the thing. 350 degrees, so do be careful. Technically, I'm a bit too hot for that, but I think by the time I'm putting the nozzle onto the workpiece, it's um, basically cooling down. Oh my gosh, look at this. The end result. Straight out. That was crazy. I don't think... It's been a while, actually, since I've managed to take something out so smoothly. This, by the way, is a Japanese N64 power supply board. I kind of feel I don't really want to just dismantle and chuck it away. It's a working one. <laughs> let's do a, let's do a bit of soldering while we're here because I know, I know you like the soldering as well as the desoldering. And by the way, I've really got to grips with this uh, chisel tip. So if you saw my soldering uh, iron review of this uh, Sugon T26, you'll know that I was using this soldering blade tip. <laughs> say soldering blade tip for the first time, and it's it's a bit like a, a sharp blade it's, it's actually proved really invaluable for a couple of reasons one you can just drift solder down into it which is great so you just hold it on there and I just drift it down and it'll just flow into the joints and two sometimes if you get a little bridge you can just put it in like between the, the pins and just cut it and it just cuts the bridge away do a little cutting motion clean the uh, tip and away you go but you can see though as I've been running it I'm going to cool it down actually as I've been running it hot over hot you can see it's got that bit of black on there i'll have to give it a quick clean to get rid of that but yeah don't you know, don't you're not trying to kill these tips the reason i was running it so hot though i was soldering a particularly devilish connector onto some boards and they just require a lot of heat you know you need that heat in the tip so we could try desoldering something else just real quick just something else that you might normally do how about this capacitor can be fun let's get rid of that capacitor my gosh yeah I, I didn't even in, get it set the whole time there it requires so much force right so there's the <laughs> you can see that soldering iron struggling now because I turn the heat down oh but it's still got it that's fine boom let's see if that's done the trick almost so if I give that a wiggle, it's likely to go, but I'm more inclined to let's do another test and see if it would have been better to hit it with more heat right at the beginning. And I know it's a little bit contrived because we've got fresh solder here, so it might suck it up better. So I'm going to heat up that first blob, nice and hot, bang. Now I don't think I got a good job on that one. I kind of feel I skidded at the end. Try again. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It needs a bit. Oh, there you go. A little twist and the flick of the wrist, it came out. So I'm rather pleased with this. Um, I'm going to put a link to it on Amazon. You can get it from wherever you're going to get it, the usual sort of places. 
Um, let's see what they call it on this particular packet. Engineer! Compact body and high power absorption. So it's absorbing all the powers. So yeah, just look for Engineer Solder Sucker Made in Japan. I think that's the really the main selling point for it is the Made in Japanness of it. So that's what most people are pitching it. So you will definitely find one of these. And it's going to do the job for you. The SSO2. As ever, thanks for watching.